Hello and welcome to In the Labs with Tim Sway. I'm your host Tim Sway and today we are outside of my lab looking at this month's project which is a little wooden truck. It's a replica of this truck. Come on in. Welcome inside my mobile guitar store. This is a project that I've been working on for months and months now on my main YouTube channel. And if you are interested in this, you can go there and check it out. There's a whole vlog series about it. And it's probably even further along now on that channel than it looks right now. I'm filming this back in time a little bit. But so the reason I built this truck is so I can bring my store anywhere in the world and go to guitar shows and maker meetups and stuff like that and have this cool little place to hang out. There's a little bit of a stage so you can play music on it, have a double as a performance venue. You know, it'd be the kind of place that'd be awesome to take to say, oh, I don't know, the Vectric User Group Forum. But unfortunately this year it's happening online. So since I can't bring my big truck to the Vectric User Group Forum, I thought I would bring a smaller version to you. But if you don't wanna have my truck, uh, the file is set up so you can remove my logo and you can remove the guitar shape and make your own box truck and have your own logo on it or whatever. I made this one, which is what most of the video will focus on. And then I went and I simplified it and I made this one where I used a little bit of paint and uh, simplified it and made it a lot easier. But I had some things that I wanted to experiment with on this, including some fun fixturing for sort of uh, carving on four sides of it. And uh, I got to do that and it all worked and I will show you how in the video. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about how you can sort of motorize this quote with a rubber band, which kind of works. I started the whole project with this free vector I found online of a box truck, and it had, as you can see, you know, all the different angles of it that might be relevant. And this is a great starting point to do what I wanted to do. So since I wanted to make this a moving vehicle, I had to, of course, separate the wheels from it um, and then make a spot for the wheels to fit. And I also wanted to add a little bit of detail and depth to it by adding doors and having some, some texture to it, that sort of rail. As is typical for me, and I guess the process in general, there's a lot of trial and error involved. And so I would kind of do stuff and then model it. And I even cut a couple trucks that you'll see, you know, throughout the process of this video before I sort of settled on the final design. But, uh, you know, finding that free vector file made it great and easy. And what was really cool about it is it was all basically to scale. So I could use the measurements of the width of the truck to figure out how thick the block of wood needed to be etc. And then, of course, I had to, you know, change it to make it work in the real world. So far, all I've been doing is putzing around with the vector to get the basic outline shape that I want, but now let's get into some details. The circle I have is the size of the wheel I want, but I need to have a space around it that's just a little bit wider than that for it to fit and spin. So I used the offset vectors tool and experimented with the size. I settled on one tenth of an inch to figure out how big of a hub I needed around my wheel. But now that I've done that, I want to create a recess for the wheel to fit in. So what I did is I copied the truck and this new shape that I made, moved it off the board, and then used my snipping tool to cut the excess away, make one solid vector, and then I moved it back. Now that is going to be the hub that is going to get cut away so the wheel can fit inside the truck. Um, I, of course, later realized it would be simpler and faster if I just made that whole shape a circle in my toolpath, and that's the way your final file will be. But when I'm making this stuff from scratch, I want to visualize all the shapes accurately first. Now, I brought the center of that half circle down a little bit so I'd have a spot to drill a hole to run an axle through the wood of the truck. Um, I went in later and actually made that a little deeper so there'd be a little more room for the axle. But just for the sake of demonstrating, you can see what happens here. Now I went and I shifted it to the back and then I just made all my points and nodes line up perfectly just for my own OCD issues. And of course all of this stuff ends up getting changed later, but I like to keep it kind of clean as I go. And I, I just feel it helps me visualize things. Um, and even though all of this motion that I'm doing is basically just margin of error in the cutting and none of it's going to matter anyways, uh, I like to do it <laughs> the right the first time. I plan on cutting all of this with eighth inch end mills and ball noses and I also bought eighth inch 
steel rods at the home store to use as the axles but I want to make the hole just a little bit bigger than that eighth inch so the axle can spin freely in there so here I am figuring out how I'm going to do that getting the hole size exactly where I want it I ended up making them a little bit larger in the end um, and just placing those in and that's when I see that I need a little bit more material underneath that circle because it has to be in the center of the wheel of course um, and I make all the adjustments accordingly Now that I have all of that figured out, I made copies of the wheels and just moved them off to the side for later and got back to work on the truck. The real truck has, you know, marking lights in the corners, and so what I decided to do was make all of these 3 16 inch holes that go all the way through the truck because I want to keep this as a one-sided carve so I can't flip it over, and this way I can make these drill all the way through, use the 3 16 inch dowel, and pin the truck together so they'll double as indexing points and then you'll see that little bit of wood sticking out the end and I'll just make it red uh, to make them the lights initially I thought I would do something with epoxy which you'll see uh, and then later I found a better solution with my wheel vectors safely out of the way I could now go in and clean up this area to see how I wanted to cut it and here again like I said I wanted to cut past those lines to just make sure that I had a pocket there it'll make sense when I cut it um, of course later I just ended up making it a full circle because it's faster if the CNC just runs circles instead of these crazy shapes now that I have all my geometry figured out it's time to duplicate it and I couldn't just mirror the letters though I had to make sure that they faced the right way um, and now that it's duplicated and you can see I figured out my circles it's time to model it after cutting the truck a few times, I, I ended up making changes to all of these measurements. So you can ignore the numbers, but basically all I did is I extruded the body up to almost an inch out of the truck to create a basic shape there. Here I brought it up to almost the full thickness of my wood and I just did it as a straight out shape, but I eventually ended up rounding the edges a little bit to make it look a little nicer. Um, so once I had the basic body built, I could start adding some of the parts and I experimented with how I wanted to do this. I started by uh, taking this sort of ridge that goes along the truck and just raising it up a little bit and giving it a sort of round over look. And I liked it, but here's where the truck started looking kind of square, so I had to delete all the work I just did and start over to give my truck those round over edges like I discussed. A great way to learn about 3D modeling is to do these simple types of projects like this and figure them out yourself. And here you can see I'm pushing parameters to sort of ridiculous limits and looking at all the different shapes to figure out what they do before I bring them down to tangible limits where it might be not as noticeable of what those changes are. Um, but at least now you understand them and then you can just make these subtle differences um, by adding a sort of uh, maximum limit height to it I could make sure that the outside of the truck stays flat and just the edges get rounded over and I learned this by doing like those sort of extreme things like you just saw a minute ago initially I thought this would be the end of my modeling and the rest would be done by just cutting in the toolpath so I started experimenting with that and carving in the shapes and doors and lettering Again, there's always a little bit of trial and error here, and I ended up realizing in the process that I needed to add a door handle to my model. So I started over again and sort of rebuilt everything real quick and made it all to the sizes and shapes that I wanted. Uh, but you don't really know this until you start cutting and seeing what it looks like. Uh, and then, of course, the more you do, the more experience you get with it, and the more you know what it's going to look like before you go through all this through, you know, our good old friend practice. So... This is me practicing and figuring out exactly how I want it to look. I had to take my eighth inch end mill into consideration when modeling these windows and doors to make sure it would fit in between the spaces. That's why I keep editing those. On my first pass, I decided to cut the wheels out of the same block of wood that I had that was about 5 inches by 12 inches by 1 inch thick. The whole truck becomes almost 2 inches thick glued together, but the wheels only needed to be a half inch thick so they'd fit in the wheel wells right. So I removed a bunch of material from the wood first before cutting the wheels out to bring them down to a half inch. But I did change that later, and I'll show you what I came up with. I went and cut out a copy to take a look at the file, and I'm pretty happy with it, but I wanted to make some changes. I wanted to make the nose 
come up a little higher. I decided instead of doing a 2D cut to cut these doors out, I actually modeled them in and I wanna try that and see what that looks like. I added a little bit of contour to the top for some future things that I wanna do. And I changed the wheel size a little bit, but it's all basically the same and that's the file that you will get. So let's cut another one and see what happens. I used the old masking tape with a little super glue in between it to make my own two-sided tape, which works better than two-sided tape. Let that cure for a minute. And now I wanted to talk about the end mills I'm using for a minute. First off, you can see that I have this eighth inch ball nose end mill, which has a quarter inch shaft, so I can pop that right in my router. But now the other one I have is an eighth inch shaft. So I have these couplers that I'd picked up they were a couple bucks a piece, and it's basically another collet that I can put inside the collet on my CNC router. Uh, the other thing about that, though, is that my block of wood is an inch, and I do have to cut all the way through that inch. So I had to take that relatively short cutter and kind of just barely stick it into the collet to get a whole inch of length. Um, I also use this 30-degree uh, V-bit for doing my letter carving on the side of the truck. Here you can see that I'm making sure I have at least an inch of cutter sticking out of the collet and now I can do all of my plunging and cutting all the way through without the collet hitting the wood and making a mess of it. Uh, in the future if I were to do more of these I would probably see if I could find a longer end mill that would do the job. But that was all I had and I was able to make it work although it was a little sketchy having so little of it clamped into the router. A couple of my wheels had flat tires, so I added another set of wheels, and um, I didn't quite cut through deep enough, so I had to break it apart and clean it up a little bit. Next time, I think I would cut all the way into my wasteboard a little bit to make sure I got nice clean edges instead of doing all this finagling. Okay, let's talk about the rubber band motor. Now, I have these two half-inch thick hubs that are going to hold my wheels in place and what I did is removed a quarter inch from the inside of each of these tabs before I glued it together so I would have access to get in between those two wheels. This will all make more sense when you see what I did with the rubber bands later and none of this is necessary and actually I think I like it better without it so just keep watching. That's that eighth inch uh, piece of steel dowel that I bought at the home store, and this is some 3 sixteenths inch dowel that I bought also at the store to use as pegs to pin these two pieces together. So my original thought was that I would put these four uh, dowels in the corners, and I, I figured I would put them through almost all the way, and then put a little bit of red tinted epoxy into the corners to make them look like lights. And this turned out to be a terrible idea <laughs> because I, I could do it on one side, I could do that pretty well, but then on the other side what I would have to do is actually cut off and drill into the hole to get that remaining piece out. I couldn't get it banged in nice. So you can see here after it dries and I clean it up that I end up having this you know sort of ugly side you'll see in a second. And I also filled in the lettering with this um, Starbond uh, CA glue that I have that's white. A uh, little bit of activator to make it dry fast, just to give a little bit more exposure to the lettering. But so here you can see that the one side of the truck, uh, I sanded the dowels flush, and then I went drilling them out. And this was all just, just a horrible idea. I had this little sort of awl that I, that I cleaned it out with, and then poured epoxy in. But before I did that, this was the part of the build that I was really excited about. I thought it would be fun to try and clamp the truck into my CNC so I could carve on the front and back of it because I had all the geometry from that original photo that I downloaded that had like sort of the front and back of the truck and now I had all the measurements and the math. So I thought, well, why not make like a little windshield and a little tail? Um, this is the basic generic uh, truck information that I had. And then I just sort of sized it down to the size of the actual rectangle of the truck after I cut it and changed it to look like the back of my truck, which has some sort of horizontal um, indents in them to where there's this stage that I built and whatnot. Uh, and that was just some very basic vector drawing on this little thing. But now the really fun part was to try to figure out how to securely hold the truck and cut these out. And I thought it'd be fun because it was a small block of wood that would fit under the clearance of my CNC table uh, that I could just screw a wooden call clamp to my bench, adjust it to hold the piece of material and get it nice and tight and then add one more screw to the one side that I'd left loose in order to tighten it, then center and cut. And so this is just a quick, easy way 
to make a fairly complicated job happen. And here you can see I'm cutting out some sort of shapes to mimic the back look of the way my stage design is on the truck. Um, and I, you got to be really careful lining it up. I wasn't quite perfect with the lineup, but you can see there I just unscrew the one side of the call clamp and I can move it and then tighten it again. And I wanted to cut a little bit of recesses to show off the front windows. And so that meant I had to put it in at an angle because that was an angled cut. Um, and it wasn't quite strong enough just using the clamp like it is. So I screwed a couple of pieces of scrap wood on either side of it and that got it nice and tight. And uh, this really was something, I just this idea I had that really opened up a lot of ideas in my brain for fixture holding on a CNC because we all know that's a big part of the job. Um, using this idea, now I feel like I can carve just about anything on the machine if I take a few minutes to do something creative with the clamping system. Uh, and I do plan on experimenting more with this in the future. This is obviously a very simple thing to do. But I do have these files included with your download. Um, but I don't think they're necessary just because the two pieces of wood when glued together create that center seam. And I think that gives enough of a look to the truck to not need to do all that extra work. Although the front windows are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a little off, but pretty close. Now it's a little high here, so I'll probably edit the file a little bit before I send it to you. Cool. I was pretty excited that that worked. Now here's that red epoxy that I was uh, doing, filling in those holes, and it was just a, just a waste of time. You'll see the simpler solution that you've probably already thought of that I came up with later. You'll also see that on the top of my truck, there's a bit of a rectangle there, and um, I had that on both sides of the file, and I was gonna carve that into the shape of my solar panels that are up there. But then I realized that if I just did it on half the truck, it was almost exactly what my solar panels look like. So I didn't have to carve that top side. Uh, and that was just some of my homemade beeswax and mineral oil uh, that I put on as a polish. Then I cut that little steel dowel uh, and just used a little bit of uh, five minute epoxy on the hubs inside the wheel and uh, made sure they didn't accidentally stick to the truck. Glued the wheels on and that was pretty much it. So now back to the rubber band motor. Um, that's just a little sort of finish nail that I banged into the bottom of the truck. And uh, so the whole trick to this motor is if you wrap a rubber band around the axle and sort of loop it into itself, which you'll see me do right here, it um, will wind up as if you pull or spin the wheels, it'll kind of wind on itself and stick to itself. And then when you let go, it'll want to unwind, of course, because it's a rubber band. This one was too long. I had to tie it and cut it. Um, and so what that means is if you pull back on the truck and then let go, the rubber band will unwind propelling the truck forward and you have a very simple little motor. It's a trick that my stepdaughter came home with from some STEM camp back, you know, a hundred years ago and I loved and <laughs> I've used before. Cool, right? This is with the rubber band removed and I'm just pushing it across my workbench. That little bump on the top is supposed to represent that sunshade that I have that pulls out off the back of my truck and it got a little broken and sanded and flat in this model, but uh, I made it a little bigger in future iterations so I think it'll last a little longer. Now let's put the motor in and watch it really go. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it doesn't really go. See what's happening? <laughs> it just burns rubber or burns wood. <laughs> the truck isn't heavy enough to get and doesn't have enough traction to go, but then if you put it on something with a little more grip, it works. Years ago, and long before I ever even thought about having a CNC in my shop, I made this wood copy of my old yellow pickup truck um, out of a 2x4 for one of those online 2x4 competitions. And uh, it was kind of fun, I just hot glued it together. But when I did it, I made it have four wheel drive by putting these two axles on with, these, with this peg in the middle. And you can see I have this rubber band looped over the axle. So when you wind it up by pulling it backwards and then let go, it kind of has a little bit of a motor. It's pretty cool, right? I thought that would be kind of cool to do with this truck. And you can see this is what the bottom of it looks like right off the presses. But if you simply remove a little bit of wood 
from in between this rear axle and carve away a little bit underneath it so there's room to get a rubber band underneath it, you can slide a rubber band through there and then hook it onto just like a little nail up here. And uh, this truck with these wooden wheels, it doesn't work great. It basically just peels out and doesn't move anywhere on slick surfaces. But if you put it on a surface with a little bit of grip, it can actually go a little bit. But I think the truck is more fun without that. I just wanted to teach you that trick because it's a fun little project to do with maybe one of your younger kids someday. Um, because it's like a, it's amazing when you're five. With all my lessons learned, I made another couple of them, and these are all the files that are included with your download. So here's the main file where there's actually two trucks on it now from a 1 inch by 12 inch by, I believe, 5 inch block of wood. This is the file to cut the back if you wanted to do that tricky clamping stuff. And then there's this file here to cut the windows out of the front if you wanted to try that, which would be the more important of the two, I believe. And I moved the wheels over to a separate, I think it was 4 inch by 2 inch block of wood uh, that's only a half inch thick, so there's less waste. I cut these two out of a piece of reclaimed kumaru decking I had left over, and it's only a 12 inch long block, which is like a cool length for like a little project like this, because almost every job has like a 12 inch block left over. Or you could cut only one truck from even a cut off as small as six inches if you just remember to swap the sides so you don't cut two left sides. I got real excited when I remembered I had this piece of half inch thick black plastic that I got from a local sign shop and they had apparently used it as some kind of wasteboard but there's enough clean pieces of it to where I was able to cut little black plastic wheels out of it and uh, that really makes the look of this batch of trucks. Here's a pro tip. I used the saw before, but if you just score your dowel with a razor blade all the way around, you can snap it and get a cleaner edge than you'll get with the saw. So now I glued these halves together just like before, and it, but this time I let the dowels go all the way through so I could just cut them and sand them flush. And I also reduced it down to only three dowels uh, because, you know, we don't have to be completely accurate with all the light placements. And I use a wire brush to clean out the V-carver. That's a trick I learned from Izzy Swan. If you don't know who he is, you should stop watching and go watch some Izzy Swan. <laughs> And yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but I could just use a little tiny dab of red paint instead of all that epoxy and mess and waiting, <laughs> and that gave me the look that I wanted. And since I was busting the red paint out, I figured I might as well grab some yellow. I only had a little bit of spray paint yellow laying around uh, just to make the front yellow. Same beeswax polish and glued the wheels on the same way. And uh, these trucks I didn't bother with the rubber band motor, and they are a lot of fun just like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed my project and my contribution to this year's user group meeting. Remember, if you log into your Being Co account, you can download all these files and make your own. You can make the simple version or the more complicated version. And be sure to check out some of the other projects and tutorials and informational pieces going on with this event because there's a lot of amazing and creative and innovative stuff happening here at Vectric and uh, online. And this is a great place to learn and grow as a maker and a machinist and a CNC operator or whatever you want to call yourself. Uh, and I'm just happy to be a part of it all and happy to have you here with me. So thanks a lot. I'll see you around the interweb. Be good.